grapevine.org or our mobile app. Well, good morning. Welcome to the chapel. I hope that there are any strays out there who didn't get the message about how we're all going to meet in here. I hope they find their way. It is great to see you. If we haven't met, my name is Grant. I'm a pastor here. We invite you to fill out the registration so we can get in touch with you and tell you more about how you can be a part of this church and what God is doing here. So yes, the ACs are broke, and so we decided to make a party out of it. We've got popsicles for after church. Uh, They'll be in the atrium because when your air conditioner breaks and it's a million degrees outside, you have popsicles. It just seems like the best thing to do. And because we're in here in Founders Chapel, where for many of us, where it all began, we're going to be singing old classic greatest hits hymns this morning. Oh, yes, you can applaud that, yeah. Yeah. I, I love how I love how excited people get about him. So today's just a it's a great and beautiful day, and I thank you all for being here. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord, we thank you so much for the call that you place on all of our lives, and for your faithful love and mercy and your faithful blessings. We ask to be present in this space. Open our hearts and our minds and our eyes so that we can see how we are being called to serve you this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our first great old-fashioned hymn is, of course, the wonderful How Great Thou Art. Will you stand and let us sing together? Shall come with shouts. 
may be seated, and it's time for children's time. So I'd like to invite the kids to come forward. Is that all right, Carly? Is that what we're doing? All right. <laughs> children's time for uh, with Monica. Hello, hello. Hi, girlies. <laughs> We've created a traffic jam. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> all right. Hey, guys. How are y'all? All right. Hi, friends. How, what do you guys think of the decoration so far? Are they so good? Aren't they amazing? They're so good. Yes. We love them. They are awesome. All right. I have a question for you guys. And I know you girls, so I know y'all will have some good answers to this. What makes someone a good friend? What's something that makes a good friend? If they're kind. Kind, of course. If they're, if they're loving and they put you first. That's a good one. What else? If they're gentle to you. That's so good. Oh, you have another one? What else? Um, even if you get, if, even if you are a little bit annoying, they still, um, they <laughs> still are nice to you. That's such a good one. I have three friends here on the front row who would tell you, like, I'm really glad they're my friends, even though I'm very annoying to them sometimes. So... <laughs> It just happens. That's a good one. I love that one. What are some things a good friend does not do? What does a good friend not do? Says mean things. Yes. What else? Write mean notes. Ooh, yes. Okay. So another couple things that I thought of was like a good friend. Let's see. Are They're always there for you, right? You can count on them when you need them. So do you guys have faithful? Oh, well, 
that's the word, faithfulness, right? Isn't it rolling away? <laughs> so faithfulness is our, what is it, fruit of the spirit. I almost said something else. Fruit of the spirit this week, faithfulness. And all those things that we talked about, being kind, being um, trustworthy, you know, doing all those things that a good friend does, that, those are all good ways to describe faithfulness and being a faithful friend. That's the kind of friend y'all just described, is a faithful friend. Do you feel like you have a faithful friend in your, in your life? Me too. And I know that you guys know one of my faithful friends. It's Miss Sandy. She's one of my faithful friends because you know why? She's always there for me when I need her. She's always nice to me. She helps take care of me and my family, and she's all I can always count on her. She's a faithful friend. So when you guys go to school in a few weeks, you're going to see all kinds of friends that you maybe didn't see all summer. And I want you to think about a lesson that I learned a long time ago that is the best way to get a faithful friend what do you think? What's the best way to get one? To be nice to the person you want to be friends with. Yeah, what else? To be a faithful friend. Yes, to get a faithful friend, you be a faithful friend, right? So that means like inviting someone to play or to sit with you at lunch. It means like maybe helping them with their schoolwork if they're having a hard time or just like standing up for them if they're being picked on. Those are great ways to be a faithful friend. So what, I'm, what I have here is some friendship bracelets, kind of like this one I'm wearing. And I want, ooh, I love that. So what I want y'all to do is everybody take one, actually take two, okay? So take two bracelets and I want you to wear one and then I want you to give one to somebody who's a faithful friend to you, okay? And then when you're wearing this and you look at it, I want you to remember, do you girls want a bracelet? You can pick two. When you look at it, I want you to remember what it means to be a faithful friend. And remember that sometimes it's easy, and sometimes, like Leah was saying, it's hard to be a faithful friend because maybe the person you're trying to be a faithful friend to yeah, is like not acting the way that makes it easy. And that's when I want you to look at your bracelet, and I want you to pray, and I want you to ask God for help to be a faithful friend. Because sometimes being faithful is easy, and sometimes it's hard. And when it's hard, we can always ask God for help, okay? So we're going to pray, and then we'll go sit down, okay? All right, dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for these friends who are here and our friends who are watching at home. And God, I thank you that you are a faithful friend to each one of us. And God, I pray that as we go to school and we hang out with our friends for the rest of the summer, that we would remember how to be a faithful friend to the people who need it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks, guys. We've come now to the time of our service where we get to pray for and with one another. It's a gift uh, to be in Christian community with each other and to be able to lift one another in prayer. Amen. So before I do that, you notice Monica mentioned all these wacky decorations that are happening here. I had someone say and I heard overheard someone say, why do we have all this hula stuff going on in our church today? And it's because we have vacation Bible camp happening this week. We've got almost 300 kids, many of whom don't go to our church, uh, who are going to be roaming the halls, learning about Jesus, singing songs about God. And we get to be a part of that. And I say that, uh, one, so you should, can go look at the decorations. Our team did a great job of putting those together. Two, so you can be in prayer for those uh, kids and the adults that are going to be helping them. And three, because we need three or four more volunteers. We had a few people get sick. And so if you were thinking, I meant to volunteer, but I didn't, now is your chance. And if you'll talk to me or Monica or Sandy after the service, we will get you hooked up. Sound good? All right. Let's take a deep breath. And let's go to God in prayer. God, we're grateful for your presence with us today, and we're thankful that you are present with us in worship. We're thankful that we get to sing songs about you and to you, that we get to pray for each other. We're thankful we get to hear your word, and we're thankful that we get to then go and be your hands and feet. Help us to do that this week. 
We pray for those who are struggling, those who are having a hard time, who are going through life changes, good or bad. We pray that you could guide us, God, how to be comfort to people who need healing, how we can lend a helping hand, how we can be your presence to those who might not know you. We thank you for the wonderful things happening. We thank you for Vacation Bible Camp. And it's our prayer that each camper who walks through the door would know that this is a place that they are loved and that you love them, God. We pray for the adults and the youth that are helping them and pray that you give them energy when they need energy. You give them patience when they need patience. You give them uh, the creativity to share your word in a new and refreshing way. God, we ask all these things in your name and all those things on our heart that we don't say aloud, but that you know. We ask them in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward to receive this morning's offering. God from whom all blessings flow, praise God all creatures here below, alleluia, alleluia, praise God the 
the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power appears. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I invite you to remain standing for the next hymn that we'll sing together. Uh, this is actually our theme hymn for this service. We're talking about faithfulness today. So great is our faithfulness is an appropriate hymn. And come to find out, it's also one of Pastor Grant's favorite hymns, especially that line, All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Let us sing together. seated. and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee take my voice and let it sing silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine.
A tree, vine, or bush can be identified by the kind of fruit it produces. The Bible often describes a person's actions and thoughts that give evidence of a godly or ungodly life as fruits. This summer we will be looking at the fruits of the Spirit, the attributes listed in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which are characteristic of a life led by the Holy Spirit. Each week we will focus on a particular spiritual fruit and a familiar edible fruit that begins with the same letter to help us remember all the fruits. This week's fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness and the reminder fruit are Fuji apples. The Bible teaches that God calls us to live as faithful people, steadfast in our commitments to Him, our families, and our friends. The presence of the Holy Spirit helps us exhibit the kind of fruit that gives others a glimpse of a faithful God. The next time we bite into a crisp Fuji apple, beginning with the letter F, may we be reminded of the seventh fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness. My number seven. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. I think I ate my microphone and so I had to take someone else's. So there you go. Sorry. Secret signal to the back screen there. Uh, yes, that apple was delicious. No, it was not part of the plan, but you hand me an apple. I'm, I'm probably going to eat it. That's just the way things go. Uh, let me read the scripture for this morning. And I'm, I'm going to warn you, this one is pretty tense and it doesn't end on a happy note. But if you stick with me, I'll, I'll explain the rest of the story. This is out of 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 30 through 34. At that, Saul got angry at Jonathan. You son of a stubborn, rebellious woman, he said. Do you think I don't know how you've allied yourself with Jesse's son? Shame on you and on the mother who birthed you. As long as Jesse's son lives on this earth, neither you nor your dynasty will be secure. Now have him brought to me, because he's a dead man. But Jonathan answered his father Saul, Why should David be executed? What has he done? At that, Saul pointed his spear at Jonathan to strike him. And Jonathan realized that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in a rage. He didn't eat anything on the second day of the new moon because he was worried about David and because his father had humiliated him. And despite how it feels, I promise you, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are continuing our series on the fruit of the Spirit, uh, and this week's fruit is faithfulness. And yes, our, our example, our illustration fruit is a Fuji apple. I know that's stretching it a little bit, but, you know, it's, it's just been fun, and it's a million degrees outside, so you might as well have fun in church when you need to. Uh, before we go too far into this, I want to introduce you to two faithful people. I'll say more about it uh, throughout this morning, but there are two people I just I really need to point out because I need your help in thanking them for their faithfulness and for their hard work. The first one is, uh, the person who's responsible for all the decorations that you see here, not just here in this part of the building, but over in the sanctuary. I mean, this has been turned into a tropical beach paradise for these kids this week uh, in a way to entertain them, to form memories, and to share with them the story of Jesus. And the person who has worked magic to work on this, not just this week, but for months in preparation, is Marissa Neal. And yes, will we wave? There you go. So th thank you for the applause. And I asked Rick how much trouble I would be in if I, if I did that. But please, uh, when you see her after this service, introduce yourself if you don't know her. And just thank her for all of her faithful hard work because she did this not only this year, but every year uh, recently that we've had this. And it's just an amazing thing, an amazing opportunity to get to share the good news with these kids. And the other person is a staff member that I'd like to point out. You may not know him. I'm not sure if he's in here. Josh, can you grab Jeff Mullis? Now, Jeff Mullis is our facilities manager, and I'm pointing him out to you. Not so you can go to him with complaints. That individual is still me. I am the complaint department. I wear that badge with honor, but I just want to point him out because he's been faithfully working hard on this air conditioning situation and other things. Is We have a 
beautiful uh, building and a beautiful facility right here. Uh, and this is the person that, that God has brought to us uh, on staff to help work on it. And that's Mr. Jeff Mullis right there. I just want you to know. Thank you. I just, thank you. I want to point him out to you. Please pray for him. Please say encouraging words. He's nodding. Yes. I asked him earlier, how stressed are you? Scale one to 10. I'll keep his answer between us because he's always cool. He looks as cool as the other side of the pillow, but uh, that man's under a lot of pressure. And I just wanted to lift him up because that's the person that, that God has led here to take care of our facility so that we can be ready for weeks like this as we have an opportunity to tell kids about Jesus. And so I'll say more about that in a minute. But back to the story. And so, this week as we're talking about faithfulness, uh, it's, it's a real challenge, I think, in our minds to define and understand what faithfulness is. Like a couple weeks ago, I was talking about goodness. That's really hard to label. What is a good day? How do you know if I'm a good person? What is the good life? That's, that's really hard to define, and we need God's help to work in us and through a situation for understand what goodness is. And I think the same is with faithfulness. We understand the word, we understand faithfulness is like loyalty, and there's an implication of, of love, trust, and care. Faithfulness. I think we know it when we see it, and yet, due to the world in which we live in, it's hard to really know. What is God's faithfulness? Is God really even faithful? What does it mean for us to respond with faithfulness? I think it's difficult because there's one guaranteed thing you can say about this world in which we live, and that's that it is always changing. You can try to make plans in your life. Like, I love that question. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I, 10 years ago, I did not answer this, I can assure you. And I'm sure if you think back on your life when you've been asked that, you know that your predictions of what the, the time ahead of you held, your, all of your predictions and hopes and dreams were way off the mark. Life is always changing. Our own, our own bodies aren't even faithful to us. I'm a relatively young man, still going to hold on to that label as long as I can. And my knees are not being faithful to me. I've had other th things like arteries not be faithful to me in my life, and it continues to change. The color of my hair is a little bit less faithful than I'd like for it <laughs> to be. That's, that's a hard one for me personally. I've really, I've ridden that about as far as it'll go, I think, at this point, and it's, uh, it's changing on me quickly. We think of faithfulness in our lives. I mean... It, the truth is that our lives will end, that the lives of those that we love and care for, those that we lean on, that we need, they leave us as well. I love that we're singing these old hymns this morning, but I tell you, it's a little sad to, to stand there. In fact, I get a tear in my eye when I hear like the old rugged cross, because I hear the voices of my family, of my loved ones, that I only hear them in my head because they have gone on. It's hard to go through life knowing that the things that we try to base our strength on that we need, they're not always going to be there. It's also true about our employment. You know, you used to hear, and I think some of you might have experienced what it used to be like where you're faithful and loyal to your company, and the company is faithful and loyal to you, and you work there 20, 30, 40 years, and then they give you a pension, and they pay you till you die. That doesn't happen anymore. We seem to be moving from job to job. Companies come, companies go. Even just the way that we work has changed. But we don't see faithfulness in the world around us. We don't have solid ground to stand on financially, personally, physically. Even here at church, church changes. Now, I, the biggest complaint that I hear, as I understand it, is things aren't what they used to be. And believe me, I, I relate to that. I understand. There's a little church in Arkansas I wish was the same as it was when I was a kid, when my grandma was telling me, don't put your mouth on that. <laughs> I'm tell you, not only do I know all the old hymns in a Cokesbury hymnal, I know what it smells like and tastes like. <laughs> to this day, and I wish it could be that way again, and so I totally understand that when you come through these doors, you wish you still saw the same faces Wish that we still sang the same songs and that things were like it was before. And yet, we hear, we read that God is faithful in that. And I wouldn't blame you if you would have a dark night and ask, really? Show me. I can imagine David was going through a moment like that. To set the scene here, the people of Israel had asked 
the prophet Samuel for a king. They were growing up as a nation, and they were looking around at these other empires growing up, and they had armies and chariots and, and palaces and kings. And they said, those kings look fancy and handsome, and they dress nice. And we have a prophet. He does none of those things. He looks kind of weird. We'd like a king like everyone else. And God said, okay, uh, I'll warn you, but I'll give you a king. And so God called Samuel the prophet. That's why the book is named after him, to anoint the first king. And God called Saul. Now, Saul checked all the right boxes of what you want for a king. He was tall. He was good looking. He knew how to handle himself in a scrap. He had all these things. And God said to him, I'll be faithful to you. And you will be king and your line will be king. If you are faithful to me, it's not if you're the best king, it's not if you're the smartest king or the strongest king, but you're faithful to me and I'll be faithful to you. Now Saul, upon receiving his promotion, he was not faithful to God. He tried to do what he wanted to do. He tried to take shortcuts. He tried to be a king like the kings that he saw around him, tried to live like a person of the world. He didn't try to bear God's fruit into the world. He tried to enrich himself and do what he wanted to do. And so, God called Samuel to anoint the next king. Go ahead and find him. I'll lead him to you. You put oil on him, and this will be the next king. Saul will serve out his term, and then the line will go elsewhere. And I love that story. If you've not heard it, it's, it's, it's almost funny that Samuel the prophet, he, he's called to go, and he finds this guy named Jesse, and he's kind of a normal guy, but he's got a bunch of sons. And he says to Jesse, I want to see your sons, all your sons. He goes, okay, I have a collection here. And he goes and, and shows them. And the first one, the eldest, he's tall, he's handsome, he checks all those boxes, right? He's got the profile, the face profile. That will look good on a gold coin. All right, here we go. Down the line, the first one, that's not him. The second one, he's also, he's tall, he's strong, he's, he's got all these other qualifications on his resume. No, not that one either. And he goes down the line, and Samuel, because he knows that God has led him here to this house, to this family, he says, do you have any other sons? And Jesse's a little bit embarrassed. We have one more. Uh, he's, he's in the after-school program out in the field. Uh, he's kind of squirrely, though. He's, he's kind of the runt. We're embarrassed of him, and uh, yeah, we intentionally did not text him on his cell phone that you were coming. We'll go and grab him, though. Yeah, and so he comes in and it's David. David doesn't have the look. He doesn't have all the, the time in the in military academy. He likes to sing songs, takes care of the sheep. And God said to Samuel, it's this one. This is the one. Not because the way he looks, not because what he does, but because of his heart. And if, and if he's faithful to me, I will always be faithful to him and to his line. And so David is anointed. He, know, he knows he's to be the next king. And he knows that God's not done with Saul. God's not done with Saul's reign. And so David goes to, into David's court. He serves his king. He does his best to follow him. He does his best to be faithful. And yet, Saul tries to have him killed. Basically from chapter 18 on. And I encourage you later, sit down with a cup of coffee and, and, and just read that all the way to the end of the, or whatever it is you want to drink while you read the Bible. I'm not here to judge. Uh, <laughs> I had someone ask me a clarifying question earlier this morning. I said, you go with God. I, I'm, I'm not here to check off what's in the cup. And, and it's, it says over and over again that Saul tried to kill David. And then Saul tried to have David killed. And, you know, and then Saul tried to kill David over and over and over again. I can't imagine being in that situation where you hear that God is faithful, that God has anointed you to go down this path to serve in this way, and yet someone that you've known your entire life, your king who has an army, is trying to kill you. I can only imagine the, the internal monologue, the conversations that David have is, is having with himself, counting off all the other options that he has. I could run away. I mean, there's no internet. They can't find me. I can go 11 miles away and set up a new family, and they'll never even know where I was. I could try to have him killed. I could try to triangulate this situation, raise an army, do something. So many things I could do. But again, the reason that God had called David in the first place 
not because of his strength, not because of his looks, but because of his faithfulness. He chose, he made the very difficult decision to be faithful to his king, to wait his time. There's even a point in the story, and this is just crazy. Saul is asleep in a cave. David sneaks in there at night, cuts off a part of his pants leg. And so he can wave it at him later and say, look at how close I got to you. Never once have I turned on you. I'm not about to start. It didn't change Saul's mind. But it is a story of David's faithfulness, even in the face of death. God's faithfulness there was present and displayed, and God was faithful to David, not just in his life, but throughout his life. Now, if you've come to church before and you've heard about King David, then you're aware this guy made some horrible mistakes. We would not label him as a good person. He did a lot of things that were, in fact, you could say were just a cautionary tale of please don't do this. And yet, every time he messed up, every time he hit rock bottom, Every time he did what he thought was best and not what God was leading him to do, he fell on his knees. He said he was sorry. He repented and turned back to God. His response was not always, his reactions to the world around him was not always the right thing. He didn't always do the right thing. Wasn't necessarily what you would even call a good king when it was all said and done. But he was faithful, and God was faithful to him. You see, David is the one in his kingly line. That's the one that Jesus came from. That is Jesus' lineage. And yes, from that time, this is about a thousand years before the birth of Jesus Christ. Their empires rise and fall. The kingdom of, of Israel splits in half. It's conquered. People come back. They rise up for a moment in between the Old Testament and the New Testament, only be conquered again. Over and over and over. And yet, God was faithful to David, so much so that God's only son came from his line, from his family. In fact, I tell you what, those of us who got to travel to Israel in 2019, you get to see David's name on a lot of things even today, 3,000 years later. That's how faithful God has been to David and to his lineage and to his family. And so fast forward to us, to be faithful in the face of what we see all around us, of the world changing, of things being difficult and dangerous, and just all the options and choices we have like David was when he was faced with adversity. In the midst of this, we're called to be faithful to God's mission. We're called to faithfully bear fruit to a world even when it feels like it's out to get us. We're called to be faithful to this church, to continue to do ministry, to continue to love our neighbor. It's not easy. But with God's help, we can do it. If we are faithful to God, God will be faithful to us. This entire series I, I've been thinking about and praying about is examples of this. And, and I've mentioned each week uh, different historical examples of people being faithful to God, of seeking God, and God bearing fruit in their life and in their work time and time again. And to me, I think an example this week that really stands out is just the foundation of our little, our little branch of the Christian family tree, which is the Methodist Church, the United Methodist Church. If that's completely new to you, maybe you saw it on the sign, uh, but I will just summarize this beautiful, wonderful history. There have been several Methodist pastors in my family, just, just decades, generations of them. Uh, but it all started with two guys, two brothers named John and Charles Wesley in England in the late 1700s. And I'll just summarize these two as if you saw them, you would not think God's going to use these two nerds to do incredible things. That's not the impression that they gave off. And yet, they were, they were faithful to the calling in their lives to go and to share uh, the love of God. And to go and say, basically, if you live by the method of just turning to God and reading God's word and praying, if you just make that a method, a part of your life, God will bless it. God will be faithful to you. God will bear fruit in your life. They, they were so faithful to that call that they began to plant churches and to go and to send people, pastors, even here uh, to what was at the time just the colonies. Now, during their time, when they're looking at trying to send people here to our land to spread the good news, uh, the Revolutionary War began. Or as John and Charles Wesley would have thought of it as the aggression of the colonies. 
John Wesley himself was not too happy about the American leadership trying to fight off their king, but despite his personal opinions on the political situation, he ordained pastors and sent them here to our country. And if you ever have the chance to just drive across the United States and you get off the beaten path, you get off the interstate and you start going through little small towns, you'll notice over and over again that every time you, you find a town, there's a Methodist church there. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I noticed that years and years ago and began to think like, we're, we're everywhere. And the truth is that we were faithful to that call that we began planting churches in places where it was, civilization was just barely established. I served a, a church before this in, in Fort Worth, in West Fort Worth, and I found a copy of the original news article about the, the forming of that church, Arlington Heights United Methodist Church. And in that same news article, they were talking about Reverend E.H. Lightfoot starting this church down here in 1923. Uh, they mentioned that the neighborhood had a severe wolf problem. Yeah, really bad, apparently. Very dangerous. Don't go out at night at all. You will not fare well. It was that type of environment, but yet E.H. Lightfoot and the others felt called to start that church, to be faithful to God's call in their lives, not knowing where it would go, not even knowing if that church would last five minutes, much less a hundred years. And yet, they were faithful to God's call. You know, the same with this church here. So Arlington Heights is just not even ripe compared to our church, which is 156 years old. I mentioned that. that yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I, I appreciate you getting excited about our church being old because I too am excited about it. Because you know what else is 156 years old? Grapevine, Texas. That's right. There was a church. You can clap about that as well. That dude is real excited about church and his hometown, apparently. Like, that's right. Uh, but that's how old this church is, that whenever there was a town established here, that there were Methodists who said, we want to be faithful and we want to start a church to serve this community. They had no idea the Grapevine would have DFW Airport and rail lines and so many people move here from all over the world. No idea. But we're being called to faithfully serve here, so we start this church. I love to point out to people that that street out there, our address is 422 Church Street. Okay, now we're not the only church on Church Street now, but you better believe we were the first. In fact, I've, I've not found record of this, but I'm willing to bet we were here before the street, and that's why it got named after us. That's how long and faithful this congregation has been. And we are called to continually be a part of that to be a part of that faithful bearing of fruit that's been happening right here for over a century and a half because God has a part for us to play. Now, just like David, just like John and Charles Wesley, just like the people who founded these Methodist churches all across our country, we're not called to be the biggest, the best, the brightest, the smartest, the tallest, most handsome, any of that. We're called to be faithful. And God blesses that faithfulness and does incredible things. Now, you've already heard we've got Vacation Bible Camp going on this week. It's so exciting. It's such a great opportunity and just one way that we are trying to be faithful as a church. And it really does bear fruit whenever we as a church turn to the children that God brings through our door and we love them and care for them and try to teach them the stories of Jesus Christ. One of the people involved in Vacation Bible Camp is a man named Ed Crater. I don't even know if Ed Crater's in the room. I think he's, Ed Crater's sort of like our version of Batman. He just, <laughs> those of you who know him know what I'm talking about. Anytime there's something going on here, if, if something breaks on the building, if somebody's in trouble, if there's a medical emergency, Ed Crater pops up out of nowhere ready to help with everything. He served on every committee that we've ever had. He's just Mr. First Grapevine. I think is that a fair way to describe him? When I, start, when I was first appointed here, I just assumed he was on staff because he was just up here all the time. And did you know that Mr. Ed Crater did not grow up in church? He wasn't like me, like... My grandma was going to take me to church, rain or, rain or shine. Ed was not that way. Ed felt called as a kid to get on his little bicycle and ride to a church nearby. And that church welcomed the stray kid who came through the door, who rode his bike. They loved him, cared for him, told him the stories of Jesus. And their faithfulness to care for every person that came through that door is still bearing fruit to this day. And we'll continue to bear fruit because Ed Crater's going to dress up in a costume and tell stories of Jesus to kids 
just as they were told to him. And who knows that one of those kids in that classroom will grow up to be the Ed Crater for a church decades from now after you and I are long gone. If we are faithful, if we faithfully respond to God's love and presence in our lives, God will bless it. God will be present. I know life is hard. I know things changing all the time is difficult. I know it's hard to lose the loved ones that we need, but God's faithfulness and love is with us not just in this life, but in the next. And God's love and faithfulness will always be at work in our lives. We just have to respond. We just have to turn. We just have to be a part of that much bigger story that God is telling of that fruit that's bearing in, out into the world, that's making a difference. I don't just share that about Vacation Bible Camp because, yes, we really do need three more. And, yes, I know it sounds like a real burden of love to participate. But there's always opportunities for us to bear fruit. You always have those opportunities in your life. Maybe it's with the person who sits in the cubicle next to you who you know is having a difficult time. Maybe it's a friend or family member that God has put on your heart to pick up a phone and call, maybe drive by and just check on them. Maybe it's the person who lives next door that, you know, maybe you haven't had a conversation that's about anything more deep than just the weather. We're called to be faithful, to go, share, invite, pray for, listen to, love, and to serve. Be faithful. If we just do that simple thing, it will make a difference. Amen. I'm going to invite the band to come forward to pray. You're hopping up. Am I supposed to do it or you? I've got the, your microphone. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I'll pay for that later. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord, I thank you so much for your faithfulness here in our church, in our community, for your continued presence in our lives. I ask that you open our hearts and minds and show us where you are leading us today. Show us how we can bear fruit for a world that desperately needs to hear good news. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to close our service on a high note with a wonderful hymn, I'll Fly Away. Will you stand and let us sing this together? It's Tom Plad Bordy when this life is o'er. Sure, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life have gone. Thank you. Special thanks. If, if you normally come to worship in here, then you might not know Linda Love, that person right there walking across the stage like Vanna White. On, uh, so there you go. So glad to have her with us here today. And so glad to have each and every. Yeah, thank you. If you today need somebody to pray with you, you've got something on your heart or mind, or if you'd like to commit your life to Christ, don't wait. Don't, don't wait for another day. We'll be up here up front, so please come talk to us. We love to pray with you and love to tell you about the good news and how you can get plugged in at this church. I hope you all have a great week. Go in peace.